Hey everybody, uh, today we're gonna work through, you can see the title at the top, the midpoint of a line segment. Um, I think today's gonna be a pretty quick one. I think it's a relatively straightforward concept. A um, couple little things to consider as you work your way through. I wanna make sure we have a good grasp of why we can do what we do. Um, and then I wanna leave you with maybe a problem at the end where you've got a couple different routes through and maybe some recommendations about how to tackle a problem like that. Okay, we're gonna be pretty quick today. Let's jump right in. So you see the first problem and question one asks you to come up with the midpoint for each line segment. So you'll notice that in problem A, you've been given a line segment that runs from A to B and you have the coordinates for them. So figure out the midpoint of that. I want you to do that on your own. Same thing when you take a look at problem B. There's another line segment, A to B, and you've been given the coordinates for both. Come up with the midpoint for each, okay? So I want you to go ahead and tackle that now, and we'll see how we, uh, how we match up, okay? Pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So if I was to go through and maybe tackle problem A, like I might be motivated to just go, okay, quick set of axes, and now I go and I plot both those points to get an idea of what I'm working with. Well, I notice that I'm at negative 4, 5 and negative 4, 11. So I got to get all the way up to 11 on my sketch. So maybe I go point B is up here at negative 4, 11. Point A is here at negative 4, 5. And now there is my line segment. So a quick sketch to help me through the problem. I'm going to zoom in just because that diagram is a little small for me. And so the problem has asked me to come up with the midpoint of that. So I would hope that we would recognize that our midpoint has to be in the middle. And now you're just trying to come up with the coordinates for that. Now, there's kind of a couple different ways to get there. Like there really are. And I want to examine two ways. The first thing that I maybe want to address is I have a feeling that I would have a bunch of people that would recognize that that is a vertical line. And that vertical line would have a length of six units. You know, we spent time calculating lengths of line segments. So you take a peek and you go, hey, that thing's six. Therefore, you would be three in from either direction to get to your middle. And so pretty quickly, I'm hoping that we could see vertically, you'd have to come to a value of eight. Three up from five or three down from 11. There you go. So if I just went and got rid of all of that green, then maybe what we could end up saying then is you have a midpoint and maybe I just call it M that would exist at the same x-coordinate, because it's a vertical line, but with a y-coordinate of 8. Okay, I want to go through and I want to tackle the same thing on question B. And I'm going to tackle it the same way. And remember, I mentioned two different ways to tackle it. But I'm going to stick with that same method on B. If, as you were working your way through, you were a little stumped on A, you have an opportunity now to pause the video, work your way through, and try to come up with what you need for B. Okay? Pause it now. Otherwise, you're coming along with me. So, I put on a quick sketch again. This one, I've got X values of negative 6 to 8. So, if I went and I plotted, I could say, well, point A would be down here at negative 6, negative 1. And then that would put point B over here at 8, negative 1. And so I could connect those with my line segment and, you know, try to draw a horizontal line. There we go. Okay, what is my midpoint? And kind of using the same strategy as last, we should hopefully be able to take a peek and recognize that that is a 14 unit long line. It's 14 long. And so if we traveled seven in from either end, then that would get us to our midpoint. So if I go ahead and get rid of all that green, and I might lose part of my diagram here. I'm hoping not to lose a whole lot of it. 
But if I travel my 7 from the right, I'm going to get to this, or 7 from the left, and I would find that same thing again, my midpoint would now be at a value of 1, negative 1. 7 up from negative 6 or 7 down from 8. There we go. Okay, I mentioned a couple different strategies. I think you're going to see why I'm going to talk about those strategies coming up next. Then what I want to do is I want to jump back to problem A and B and make sure that we're good, that I'm not pulling a fast one. There's no trick here that what I'm dealing with is a universal strategy. Okay, so let's jump into that next problem. Okay, here's problem C. Now, what I would like you to do is to try to do the same thing. And so I would like you, on your own, to try to come up with the midpoint of the line segment that runs from A to B. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So if I put on my quick set of axes again, and now I say... Well, point A has to be a little bit to the right and way down. So maybe I'm like down here. And I take a look at that, and that would be point A at 4, negative 11. Point B is now way over to the right and up a little bit. There would be point B at 10, 5. I think you can already go, as you are constructing your diagram, what makes this problem a little different. There is your line segment. There is AB. And we now have to try to come up with the midpoint of that. Okay, I think you'll notice that because my line has a slant now, it adds a little bit extra to it. Problem A, problem B, or a vertical and a horizontal line. With those to come up with the midpoint, I don't think was too bad. Well, now that it's on a slant, it adds a little more complexity. Now, how do you end up coming up with the midpoint? Okay, if I was to eyeball it, and again, I'm talking eyeball it, then I might say that is about my midpoint. Like, trusting my eyes says it's there. Whether that's an accurate location, I don't know, because I estimated where point A and point B were. It's just a sketch. Okay, how can I find the middle of that? Well, last time we started counting, you know, how far do I travel? Okay, so how long is that line segment? Well, I think you might notice that if I calculate how long that line segment is, it might not be everything I need. Okay, what I'm going to do is come up with the length of that line segment. So I'm going to come up with the length of AB. Well... I can use my Pythagorean theorem. My x's are 6 apart, so that would be my horizontal side. My y's are 16 apart, so that would be my vertical side. There's the hypotenuse on my right triangle. Well, I calculate my 6 squared is 36. I calculate my 16 squared, which is 256. Now I can put that stuff together, and I've got my 280.92. Okay, let's not even bother reducing that for now. But let's just recognize a little bit that I know that the length of that line segment now is root 292. Okay, does that help me? Well, we could end up saying then that half the distance would have to be the distance to my midpoint. That's the same strategy that we used before. So now I would need to come up with half of root 292. Well, I now start to look, okay, I at least know a 2 goes into that. Well, 2 goes into 201 time, and 92 is 46. And okay, so 2 goes into that, which we like, and that's 73, Okay, well, at least I can go through now and say that that would simplify to 2 root 73. And so if I was looking for the distance from A to M or the distance from B to M, since it is a midpoint, both of those would equal half of 2 root 73 or 1 root 73. There we go. 
Okay, I'm going to put that on my diagram. The length from A to M is root 73. Okay, how helpful is that? Okay, I don't think very, uh, very helpful. The other part that I want to make sure we're good at is just knowing the length from one end point to the midpoint isn't sufficient enough to find your midpoint. Like notice, I would have another point out here that would also be root 73 units away from A. I'll call that point C. But that's not the midpoint of AB. I would have another point out here that's root 73 away. Point D, and I would have another point out here that would be root E. And remember, if all I cared about was being that distance to the midpoint, there are infinitely many points that are root 73 away from point A. That's what we learned when we worked through our circle. So knowing the distance from one end point to the middle isn't that helpful to us when our line's on a slant. So the strategy we used prior maybe doesn't work so well now. Okay, I am going to clean up that diagram significantly, and hopefully I don't lose too much of it. I'm going to actually get rid of my green as well because I don't really care about that or root 73. Okay. I'm going to get rid of all of that algebra, or calculation, I should say, off on the right. And I'm just going to clean up my diagram a little bit to make sure that it matches up with maybe where we began. Okay. What could be a better way? Well, the issue that I want to get to for us is when we talk about midpoint... We are talking about a middle. And when we talk about a middle between two things, the endpoints of our line segment, the middle between two things, then what that becomes for us is an average. And if I was to ask you, well, how do you find the average of two things? I would hope that you would logically tell me that you would add them together and then divide by two. That's how we find the average. You take the first thing, you add it to the second thing, and then you cut it in half. That's our strategy for being able to come up with the midpoint. You already have the strategy. You just need to see it executed. You understand what an average between two things is. That's background knowledge. Now we just got to see it in play. So, let me work my way through finding the average for A and B. Okay, for me to go through and find my average, then what I need to do is I need to find my midpoint. So, I'm going to find the midpoint of A, B. That is going to equal. Well, if I look at my coordinates individually, I need to find the average of my x-coordinates. The average. Okay, well, the average of 4 and 10 would be take 4, add it to 10, cut it in half. Now, I'm going to work through my x-coordinate for a second here, but I want us to hopefully see that we would get a 14, and we got to divide that by 2, and that gives us a 7. There's the x-coordinate of my midpoint. Okay, I want to backtrack a little bit because I was a little misleading when I said that distances didn't matter. Like it actually can be very useful. I want to draw your attention to one thing and I want to go back and put something on our diagram. When we calculated the length of that full line segment, AB, we said that we were six apart on our X's and we said that we were 16 apart on our Y's. Okay, I want to focus on the X's, just the X's. If to go from A to B, I'm six apart, then it should make sense that my midpoint would be three 
apart. And you'll notice if I add 3 to my x value of a, I get to my 7. So there is something to it, but maybe what you're starting to see me draw on my diagram is something that looks familiar as another concept. Look up at point B. If M is the midpoint, then I should also be able to backtrack 3. And notice I do. Okay, that takes care of one coordinate. We need the other one now. I think for a lot of people, we could probably work our way through. You need the average of your y values. So you are going to take your 1, oops, my 5, and I am going to add to that my negative 11. And it doesn't matter what order you deal with it in. You may have been inclined to take your negative 11 and add on 5. To find the middle, cut it in half. Divide by 2. Well, negative 11 plus 5, there's a negative 6. And when I cut that in half, there's my negative 3. Okay, let's confirm that on our diagram. Well, look at my vertical green value. To go from A to B, I am 16 units apart, which should mean that for me to come down half of that, 8, or go up, half of that, 8, is going to get me to my middle. And notice we do. If I go up 8 from negative 11 or go down 8 from 5, I get to, oops, I sh really shrunk that down on you. I get to negative 3. Okay. What's the fastest way to get there then? You take a peek. Find the average of your coordinates. Average means middle. Middle means average when we're talking about two things. Okay, I want to go back to problem A and B, and I want to get some stuff down formally. Okay, you're taking a look back at your solutions from A and B. Right up at the top of your page, can you put directly underneath that heading, midpoint of a line segment, I want you to make sure that you write down average. And if you write down average, then you're never going to have to memorize a formula. You'll just know it. Okay, I'm going to work my way through those two line segments. So take a look at A. If I need to find the midpoint, then midpoint means average. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint of A, B. So let's look at my X coordinates. I need to find the average of negative 4 plus my negative 4. My comma's in a bad spot. Then cut it in half. Okay, instinctually, you look at it and say, well, the midpoint has to have the same X coordinate. Look, it's a vertical line. And notice when we calculate that, we get negative 8 divided by 2, negative 4. You get back to your original amount because you took the same two numbers, added them together. So when you cut it in half, of course you're going to get back to the same thing. But notice what we end up getting for our y coordinates. I take my one y value, I add it to my other y value, and I cut it in half. Because to find an average between two things, add them, divide by two. So that gets me 16 divided by 2. There is my 8. You'll notice a benefit to doing it the green way. You're not calculating the distance you need to move in from either endpoint. No, you're just going directly to what is the midpoint, which is what the problem asked. Notice we can go through the same thing. If I'm talking about a horizontal line, I'm going to do them both at the same time now. If I want the average, the midpoint, then I need to take my 1x value, add it to my other x value, yikes, and then divide by 2. And I'm going to do the same thing in my y values. Again, we should know what to get because it's a horizontal line. Well, if I take my negative 6 plus 8, then that's a 2, 
Negative 1 plus negative 1 is a negative 2. Cut both of them in half to find my average, and we go directly to our midpoint. Okay, I'm hoping that you guys can see that that green is by far the best way to get there. By far. So what I want to do then today is I want you to jump through and work through as fast as you can using that green, using what you know in your background. Midpoint is average. And find the midpoint of each line segment for the rest of the day. Let's get some practice. Okay, let's jump right in. Okay, I want you to work your way through D and just go through D and we'll use this one as a little bit of a confirmation. Okay, I want you to pause the video, give the one a try on your own. Whether you choose to produce a picture or not is up to you. I would hope that the way we've worked through our green solutions means you don't need to spend your time creating a picture, but your choice. Okay, you jump in, give it a shot. Pause it now. Okay, we're back. So I'm going to jump through and deal with D with no picture. And then we'll use a picture to confirm that it makes sense. Okay, if I work my way through, then my green solution would look like, well, I'm now looking for, that's really thick. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. I am looking for the midpoint of line segment EF. Notice I changed the name of the points on you. So I need to find the average of the coordinates. Well, to find the average... Add two things together, divide by two. Now, you'll notice uh, I kind of skipped a step or I viewed it as I'm going to simplify a little quicker. I don't need to blindly add two things together. When I'm going through and I see I'm going to take a six and I add a negative to it, well, I know adding negatives means subtract. So you're going to see me just write it as subtraction right off the bat. Okay, my y-coordinates, my one y-coordinate added to my other y-coordinate, cut it in half. If you did just the green, then we should have got to the point where we had a 2 over 2 and a negative 8 over 2. We now simplify to a 1, negative 4. Okay. That is very abstract for right now. Like, I don't really have much of an idea of whether that's correct or not, unless I think of a picture. So if I were to plot those points, 6, negative 1 would be about here. That's E. F would be at negative 4, negative 7, so down a lot more. There is my line segment. Does it make sense? That 1, negative 4 is my midpoint. Well, I can do a little check. For me to go from my one end point to my other one, I would have to go across 5, up 3. Man, that looks like I'm just drawn on slope. And in a way, I am, because that is my distance. Remember the hypotenuse of our right triangle. Same thing now to get to the end point. Go across 5, up 3, I'm good. I know that I've got the correct midpoint. Okay, notice everything at the bottom of the page was all a check. All I needed to do to find the midpoint was the green. Okay, your job for today, get as, really, as good as possible at finding midpoints. We want to do it quick. So, you give E a shot. Okay? Pause it now. Okay, we're back. So we're looking at our labels now, and I drew your attention to that on the last one. So now I'm looking for the midpoint of CD. Okay? That means I need the average of my X's, and I need the average of my Y's. Okay, I don't need to see this orange line of you just putting together the top. Just putting together the top. I don't need to see that. If you are quite comfortable, and I hope that we are, that you want to skip that line, no problem. If you want to include the orange, feel free. But it's never needed. 
Show me the first green line to show me that you understand average. You're telling your reader that you're finding the average. But now if you can do those calculations in your head and go straight to 3-1, then if you give me just the green lines, you've got a great solution. Okay, hopefully we match up. And hopefully that checks out. Okay, let's jump into a couple more. Okay, same thing. I, I think we could be comfortable to tackle both F and G now. I think we could. But you work through at your pace. Okay? Pause the video, attempt them on your own, and then we'll come back and we'll give a check. Okay? Pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So I'm just going to change colors a little bit. I'm going to find the midpoint of HK, and I don't have no idea. There we go, HK. So that's going to be the average of my Xs and the average of my Ys. Well, you'll notice something kind of different or something that hasn't popped up so far today happened. When you added your tops, you ended up getting an odd number. And so therefore, it did not divide by two evenly. I'm hoping you gave me the purple solution because that is perfect. Now, if you felt like you wanted to calculate nine divided by two and turn it into a decimal, then feel free. But it's never needed. Ever needed. Okay, you need to make sure that you give me an exact value always. Whether that's fraction or whether that's decimal, doesn't matter. I would be inclined to tell you, stop at the purple. Why even bother doing the extra work? Although I do understand that the orange maybe makes it a little bit easier to estimate or do a check with. Okay, hopefully you gave me the purple and hopefully we match up. Same thing on G, you're coming along for a check on G or you're pausing the video and giving it a shot on your own. Okay, here we go. You had to find the midpoint of GB. So that was a negative two plus 19 divided by two or a nine plus, and I don't know why I said or, and my Y coordinates. Okay, I find the average of the first. That's going to get me a 17 halves. I find the average of the second. That's going to give me a 33 halves. And you are totally good. I'm going to stop there. I don't even need the decimal part to go along. Okay, so some of you guys may have looked at those solutions. Oh, no, fractions. Yes, of course you can get fractions as you find the midpoint of a line segment. Not everything's going to work out to nice, neat integers. Okay, let's keep it going. What you see on the screen now, there's your H. I would like you to come up with the midpoint of KW. You see the coordinates of where K exists and W exists. I want you to come up with the midpoint for it. Okay, let's deal with a little bit of problem solving. Let's pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So the biggest part, when you were coming through, in essence, this is you writing out a formula. Because you don't know the actual location of K or W, you can't do much simplifying, especially when, if you look up at the coordinates, A and B have no relation to C and D. Like there aren't the same variables in there. There's not. So you can't do much simplifying. So what does your midpoint look like? Well, to find the midpoint, you need to find an average. So take your x from your one point, add it to your x from the other point, divided by 2. Take your y, add it to your y, divided by 2. And if you came up with that, outstanding. You can't collect, you can't simplify, you can't go any further than that. Because a's and b's and c's and d's, they're all different. Okay, what I want you to notice, that is the formula for the midpoint of a line segment. And if you were to Google something, or if you go see your tutor, or you go, they may be tempted to give you your midpoint 
of any line segment is the x-coordinate from point 1 plus the x-coordinate from point 2, cut it in half, and y1 plus y2, cut it in half. Okay, you see the big red. The red would be if I was asking you for what's the formula for a midpoint. I hope you've just proven to yourself over the course of today you do not need a formula. That you can reason that out on your own. So I say, let's never worry about that. You understand from elementary school, you understand from grade six, that to find the average of something, add them together, cut it in half. So just keep using that. Okay, let's jump into one more problem. Yeah, I have a feeling when this one came up on the screen, you were not a big fan. Um, you'll notice I gave no letters for each point, so you're just coming up with a midpoint. But yes, I did give you fractions. So the biggest part that I want you to recognize as you work your way through on this one. I have a feeling for every single person in class, nobody is going to have the problem dealing with midpoint. That doesn't mean that all of us are going to have the same midpoint when we finish. But I want us to recognize that chances are where you struggled, it had nothing to do with midpoints. It was probably fractions. So let's make sure that we don't think when we are done, wow, question I, that was so tough. Yeah, this midpoint thing, it was tough. No, it's not. If we goofed up, it was probably fractions. So that's where we need to spend our time. Okay, I want you to give I a shot. Try it on your own. We'll see how well we did. Okay, pause the video now. No, okay, we're back. So especially because there's fractions, my first line would have been this. I have to take my x from one point, add it together. I'm adding a negative, so I need to subtract my x from the other point, and then cut it in half. Ugh, fractions within fractions. Same thing with my y's. So I take my one y value, add it to my other y value, cut it in half. Ugh. Okay. If you have that down on your page, then you just prove to yourself you understand midpoint. If we don't match up in the end, then your problem is entirely with fractions. So let's make sure that we put our difficulties in the right area. Okay, that's going to help us to get better. Okay, the rest of this is all simplify. So let's take our time. I'm not even going to touch that divide by 2 in either fraction because I need to simplify my top. You'll notice on both of those fractions, for both my x and my y coordinate, I do not have a common denominator. I'm going to have to find them. So on the first fraction, I'm going to have a common denominator of 15 as I deal with my thirds and fifths. When I start to now work my way through, I need to have 10 fifteenths in the first fraction and 9 fifteenths in the second fraction. There is me doing my little times by 5, so times by 5, times by 3, so times by 3. Okay, I want to get rid of that. You're better than that. There we go. Same thing now on the right. My common denominator is going to be 20 eighths. That's going to give me a negative 35 of them plus 4 of them. Okay, now i got to continue simplifying. So the nice part is the numerator in the first fraction comes down to something pretty nice. And now divide that by 2. Please make sure that you write your dominant fraction line to make sure that it is very, very clear what is the numerator and denominator of your main fraction. Okay, same thing on the next. I'm going to have a negative 31 28ths divided by 2. Okay, I clean it up. Well, you could go through the long process of, say, taking 1 15th and dividing that by 2, which means flip and multiply, which means your denominator is going to get multiplied by 2. Your numerator is not changing. But I would hope that most of us 
are comfortable to work with, when I'm going to take a fraction and divide it by a whole number, I multiply the bottom by that number. So 1 15th divided by 2 is 1 30th. Negative 31 28 divided by 2 is negative 31. So on my bottom becomes 28 times 2, 56. And really quickly, I know that those things don't reduce because I can see back in my bottom left line, a 2 doesn't divide into 31 evenly and a 2 doesn't divide into 1 evenly. So I know that when I simplify each big fraction, I'm going to be in lowest terms. There you go. So if you were able to work your way through and get down to that red, outstanding. Just remember, the purple is today's topic. If you understand the purple, then you understand today's topic. If we didn't match up in the end, that's because, as I like to say it, we stink at fractions and we need some extra practice in those areas. Okay, I mentioned at the very beginning today, I wanted to jump into one type of problem and show you a couple different ways through and talk strategies. Here's our last problem for the day. I'm going to give you a moment to just read that problem on your screen, okay? Pause the video. Okay, so you've given it a read. You'll notice that one endpoint of line segment AB is point A. I've then given you the coordinates of the midpoint. And I want to know what are the coordinates of point B. Okay, I want to tackle this problem two different ways. So when you're working through the solution, I'm going to put a little wavy line down there. And I want you to notice where I put that wavy line. I put it below the AB. So try to match my spacing as best you can. I'm going to tackle this one on the left of that side. And then I'm going to deal with an alternate solution to it on the right. Because I think it's useful for you to see both. Okay. How would I tackle this problem? Well, if this problem was thrown at me, I'm going to work on the left. I would 100% of the time draw a picture. So let's draw a picture. Okay. What you have is point A is at negative 1, 8. The midpoint is at 5, negative 2. There's my midpoint. I now need to come up with the coordinates of point B. So based on my diagram, B's got to be about down there if I had to estimate it. Right? If I got rid of my point B and I said, well, my line segment would have to go here for halfway. So then here maybe would be the other half. Something like that. Okay, what are the coordinates of point B? Well, for me to go through and tackle that problem, I'm going to actually use lengths. And I'm going to use lengths by almost looking at slope. If that is the midpoint, then I have to construct two exact same triangles, both with the same slope. So how do I move from A to M? Well, I would go across from negative 1 to 5 is 6 units. And down from 8 to negative 2 is 10. That is my right triangle. And that creates a length of AM, whatever my hypotenuse is. That's half the total line segment. If I moved according to that length, in the exact same direction, which means same triangle, then I would have to go down 10 again and to the right 6. So if I just counted units, well, I could then say, well, therefore, B has to be. Well, 6 units to the right of 5 is 11, and 10 units down from negative 2 is negative 12. Count your units. There you go. You're done. You have the other line segment. Or sorry, the other endpoint. If I was given that problem, that is what I would do 100% of the time. Yes, does it take a little bit of time to construct a picture? Yes. But are you 100% certain in your answer? I would hope so. 
because all I really did was count. Okay, so what's going to go on the right side of that line? Well, the right side of that line, I want to show you an algebraic solution to this problem because there could be some times where this becomes really useful to you. I want to make sure that you have a structure. How could you set this up if you ever needed to solve for something that was missing? Okay, here we go. We're going to deal with this algebraically. If you started to work through like some sort of formula, some sort of idea, then we know that the midpoint is the average, right? These are both averages. So it's the average of your X and the average of your Y. So what you could do then is you could say, well, my average would be my one X coordinate, negative one, plus my other X coordinate. See, here's the problem. I don't know what my other X coordinate is. I don't know where B is. Well, then plug in your unknown X coordinate. and just call it X. Take the average. I can do the same thing with my Y's. My one endpoint that I know, its Y value is 8. But I don't know the other one. So plug in a Y. Take the average. I do know the answer when I calculate that green. I know that it has to give me the midpoint of 5, negative 2. And maybe you like writing down that green. Notice I never had to spend any time constructing a picture. So the time that I spent to construct the picture, I can save by just jotting down that green. Why is that green useful? Because I can now create two equations. You'll notice, and I'm just going to circle this in orange. This calculation that I make here has to give me the x-coordinate at my midpoint. So I could draw a conclusion, and that's why you see my therefore, that when I took negative 1 plus x and I divide it by 2, I know that it has to give me 5. And look at what I just built. I built a little equation, and it's the easiest of equations. It's only got one variable in it, little x. So to solve that equation, I'm going to get rid of my divide by 2, so times by 2, and now get rid of my minus 1, so add 1. And you'll notice you just found the x-coordinate of point B. And we could do the same thing if I circle it in purple. This calculation, whatever it is, has to give me that y-coordinate. So therefore, and since I wrote the therefore at the beginning of the orange line, I'm just going to write down an and. My 8 plus y divided by 2 has to give me negative 2. You just created another small, easy equation to solve to get rid of your divide by 2, multiply by 2, to get rid of your plus 8, minus 8. And therefore, your point B has an x-coordinate of 11 and a y-coordinate of negative 12. There you go. Two different ways through that problem. Okay, I think it's important for you to recognize that I do think that the sketch and move according to slope to determine your lengths is the best way. I think it's the best way. But if I'm not looking at drawing a picture or if maybe my values get really ugly, like say that I've got fractional coordinates and so counting units becomes a little more difficult – then maybe you like that right solution where it's all just algebra. Then you can just solve for whatever you need. Okay, there we are for today. I said it was quick, but yeah, I know, I'm never quick. Um, but I'm hoping that by going through the problems we did today and by discussing what we did, that I've maybe worked you away from trying to memorize a formula for midpoint. And instead you recognize, hey, this is just a concept that I've got in my back pocket from some other things. 
I'm now just using it in a new area. A new area. Okay, your job now, jump in and get some practice and make sure that you can get to the point where if somebody asks you to find the midpoint of something, you almost don't even have to think about it. You can work your way through comfortably. Okay, best of luck.